Hey everybody, welcome to Simple, Cheap, and Easy DIYs by Simple DIYer. Please subscribe, like, comment, and share. As always, you can check the description box for the list of items used.
First off, I'm going to start off with this wood happy harvest sign, which I got at Jollar General last fall on clearance for $1. But you can also use some of the plaques that Dollar Tree has. Uh, the square plaques will actually work for this as well. Next, I'm just going to paint it in this apple barrel paint in the color Snow White. Once the paint's fully dry, I'm just going to go ahead and distress it using sandpaper, and I'm just going to go over all of the edges. Now I'm going to take a paint stir stick and go ahead and measure the inside of the box and I'm going to cut to the length of the box. Since the sticks are a lighter wood color, I'm going to first paint them in brown oxide. And once that's dry, I'm going to go ahead and paint them in the snow white paint. Once the paint's fully dry, I'm going to go ahead and distress them as well. Now I'm just going to go ahead and glue the sticks into the box and just make sure that they are evenly glued in. I am using a hot glue for video purposes, but I do recommend a wood glue or a E6000 glue for a more permanent hold. Now taking two more paint stir sticks, I'm going to go ahead and measure out six pieces to complete the tic-tac-toe board. Once all six pieces are cut out, I'm going to go ahead and do the same steps. I'm going to paint them in the brown oxide first, and then the snow white, and then I'm going to go ahead and distress them. Mm -hmm. 
Taking the six pieces, I'm gonna go ahead and glue them in evenly to make the tic-tac-toe board, as you can see I'm doing here. And this is what it should look like once you have your tic-tac-toe board complete. Next, I'm gonna take these plastic basketballs uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and paint them first in the Waverly chalk paint in the color white. And I'm just gonna go ahead and dab on the paint. And this is what it will look like once you have the white paint on. I wasn't trying to go for a full coverage. Um, secondly, I'm going to take the brown oxide paint and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to dab one light coat on. And once that's dry, I'm going to go in and make a second coat. And this is what it should look like once it's complete. As you can see, I didn't do full coverage. That way it kind of gives the appearance of a wood-like feature. Now taking these wood puzzle pieces, I'm gonna go ahead and slide one of the pieces out and I'm just gonna apply some hot glue in the center and along the wood block and then place that wood block that I took out back in place. And this is just to help it stay together. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and paint it in the brown oxide color. And this is what it will look like once it's fully painted. And for these, which are my X's, I made four. And for the O's or the balls, I made five. Once you have all the pieces made, you can go ahead and place them into your tic-tac-toe board. And now you have a functional decor piece.
start off with this glass candy jar, which was left over from the project up in the right hand corner. Next, we're going to take this ribbon and glue it around the top of the candy jar. Next, we're going to take this reindeer moss and fill up the candy jar. Now I'm going to take these magnolias, which I got at Dollar Tree, and put it in the candy jar, but you can use any of your favorite flowers. And here's what your completed base will look like. This is super easy and simple to make. And for today's video, we're going to make two of these bases. For the lantern, we're going to take a pack of these 10 piece 12 inch wooden dowels and you will need all 10. Now four of them we're going to leave at 12 inches and the remaining six you need to cut in half which will be six inches per dowel. Once you have the dowels cut in half, that'll make you have 12 6 inch dowels. Now with four of them, you're going to go ahead and build a square and you'll repeat that two times. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. It really helps out my channel a lot. Now you should have two six inch squares. One will leave as is. The other, what you'll wanna do is take a piece of foam board and cut it to fit the inside of the dowels.
Now taking the foam board, you'll want to place that inside the dowels and then just add hot glue all the way around the bottom of the foam board. Taking your four 12 inch dowels, you'll want to glue one to each corner of the bottom of the lantern. Now taking your second square, you'll want to glue that to the top of the dowels. Taking your last four six inch dowels, you'll want to glue one to each corner of the top of the lantern in a triangle shape. If you're already subscribed to my channel, thank you so much. If you're not subscribed to my channel, make sure you subscribe now and you hit that bell icon to be notified every time I upload a new video. Once you have the top all glued, this is what it should look like. Now taking eight of the tumbling tower blocks, you'll want to glue those to the bottom of the lantern as I'm doing here. For the top of the lantern, you can use a shower curtain ring, which you can get at Dollar Tree, but I'm gonna use this metal ring that I already had on hand, and I'm just gonna glue that to the top Now I'm going to take this apple barrel paint in the color pavement and paint the entire lantern, but you can paint it in any color you'd like. And this is what your lantern will look like once it's completed and fully painted. Taking one of the vases that was made previously, you can just put that in the center or you can use a candle. I do suggest if you use a candle, use an LED candle though. This last DIY is super easy. I'm just gonna take these two pillar candles and this ribbon and wrap it around the bottom of both candles. And here's what your completed projects will look like.
by taking this Valentine sign that I had left over and using the back of it, I'm going to paint it with the apple barrel paint in the color Snow White. Once the paint's fully dry, I'm going to take this wall sticker, which I got at the Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to go ahead and apply that directly to the sign. You just want to make sure that you center the sticker and smooth it all the way out. Now taking this jute twine, I'm just going to go ahead and make a hanger for the sign. For the second project, I'm going to take this grill topper, which I got at Dollar General for $1. And then I'm going to space out uh, two and a half inches wide and cut it all the way down into three sections. Now I'm going to go ahead and take two of the sections and cut them in 12 inches in length. Now that both pieces are cut to 12 inches, I'm just going to apply hot glue to the bottom of each and apply a 12 inch dowel to the bottom. And this is what they should look like once both pieces are complete. Now taking that third piece that we had cut, we're going to cut two pieces, six inches in length. For both of the six inch pieces, we're going to take a six inch wooden dowel and glue to the bottom of both. And this is what it will look like once that's complete. Once all four pieces are complete, you're just going to go ahead and glue the six inch piece to the 12 inch piece and make a rectangle as you can see me doing here. And this is what it should look like once you glue them all together. Now taking an 8x10 canvas, which I had left over from a previous project, you're just going to go ahead and take the frame and measure it out as you see me doing here, and then cut it out.
Now taking the canvas that we just cut out, we're gonna go ahead and glue that to the bottom of the frame and you'll wanna place the white side facing up as you see me doing here. Once you have the canvas fully glued down, this is what it should look like. Now I'm going to take this nautical rope and I'm going to go ahead and separate it into three sections. Now taking one of the sections of the nautical rope, we're just gonna apply hot glue to the top of the frame and we're gonna go ahead and apply that all the way around. Now taking two pieces of the nautical rope, we're gonna go ahead and make handles on both sides of the tray. This is what the tray will look like once it's completed, and this is just for decorational purposes. Now you're gonna take a total of three mason jars, and using that nautical rope that we separated previously, we're gonna go ahead and apply that to the top of all three jars, as you can see me doing here. For one of the jars, I'm going to take these wooden utensils and go ahead and just place them in the first jar and that DIY is complete. Very simple. For the second mason jar, I'm going to take these wooden flowers, which I got at the Dollar Tree, and just place that in the jar. For the third mason jar, we're going to go ahead and do the same thing using these wooden flowers. I'm just going to go ahead and place them in the jar as well. For this last project, I'm going to take the 6x8 canvas and I'm just going to remove the canvas by using a screwdriver. Once the canvas is removed, I'm going to go ahead and take this apple barrel paint in the color Snow White and just go ahead and paint the frame. Now using the remaining piece of the grill topper, I'm going to go ahead and cut that to the size of the frame. Now using hot glue, I'm just going to go ahead and attach the wire to the back of the canvas. Now taking another piece of nautical rope, we're going to go ahead and separate that into three sections like we did previously. Now taking one of the sections, we're going to go ahead and apply that to the outer part of the frame and we're going to leave a small gap in the very bottom as you'll see me doing.
Now taking the second section of rope, we're going to go ahead and apply that to the inner part of the frame. Once you have the rope glued on, this is what it should look like. Now taking one of the six inch dowels, we're gonna go ahead and cut it down to four and a half inches. Taking that last piece of nautical rope, we're gonna go ahead and wrap that all the way around the dowel. Now in the section of the frame that didn't have the rope, we're gonna go ahead and apply hot glue and apply the wooden dowel. Now taking two tumbling tower blocks, I'm just gonna go ahead and glue both of those together. Once they're glued, I'm gonna take some nautical rope and apply that to the outer part of the blocks. Now applying a generous amount of hot glue to the bottom of the dowel, I'm going to go ahead and glue that to the middle of the blocks. Taking two of these mini clothespins, I'm going to go ahead and glue those to the wire, one on each side of the top. And now your recipe holder is complete. I'm just gonna take this chocolate chip cookie recipe that I printed out from online and just go ahead and attach that. Start off with these two 8x10 canvases and I'm just going to remove the canvas. I'm going to use a screwdriver and pliers to remove the staples. That way I can go ahead and take off the canvas. I'm going to take these two canvas frames that I used in a previous DIY and I'm just going to paint both of them with the apple barrel paint in the color white.
Now taking the apple barrel paint in the color territorial beige, I'm just going to lightly dry brush that onto the frames on all the sides. Now also, if you don't like the white and territorial beige color, you can always choose any paint color combination of your choice. And this is what they will look like once they're both fully painted. Now I'm going to take two 5 by 7 canvases and I'm going to leave the canvas on these. I'm going to go ahead and paint both of them with the territorial beige color and I'm going to go ahead and apply it lighter in some areas and darker in the others as you can see me doing here to kind of mimic a wood-like effect. And this is what they will look like once they're fully painted. Now taking the 8x10 frame and the 5x7 canvas, I'm just going to go ahead and slant the 5x7 canvas in the 8x10 frame. And it is a really snug fit. So just be careful not to break the frame, uh, but you can kind of just adjust it until it's even. Now I'm just going to be using my hot glue to go ahead and glue the frame in place. Um, I do recommend a more sturdier glue though, like an E6000 glue. Also, you could use small nails to tack the smaller frame, uh, that way it doesn't move. Now I'm going to be taking two of these larger craft sticks and just slide them in between the frame and the canvas, as you can see me doing here, to provide some support. Um, now I don't suggest using anything heavy on these shelves, just lighter items. Now these next two DIYs are super easy to make. I don't even know if I'd really consider them a DIY, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I did it. I just took these two ceramic houses and some boxwood and went ahead and placed them in the top of the houses to make them into little planters. And this is what the little planter houses will look like. Now taking two of the mini terracotta pots, I'm just going to take some more of that same boxwood and just place some in both of the pots. And this is the two little mini terracotta pots. Now taking this love sign that I had left over from Valentine's Day, I'm going to go ahead and paint the back of it with the Terrell Toral Beige color. 
And then I'm gonna take the brown oxide and just go ahead and dry brush that on uh, the full back. And this is what it will look like once it's fully painted. Next, I'm gonna be taking two of these metal flowers and I'm just gonna remove the top hanging chain and the bottom bell from both. Now you can fill in both of the little holes with some spackle, I just couldn't find mine. And then once you do that, you'll wanna go ahead and paint both flowers in the apple barrel paint in the color white. Um, and it did take me two coats to fully cover both flowers. And this is what they'll look like once they're both fully painted. Now taking my Territorial Beige color, I'm going to go ahead and dry brush that on the flower petals on both flowers. And this is what it will look like once it's fully painted. Now I'm going to take these two buttons and I'm just going to go ahead and hot glue those in the center of both flowers. Now I'm going to take both of my flowers and just go ahead and place them on the back of the board and then I'm just going to make sure that they are centered. Once I have them centered, I'm going to go ahead and use the hot glue and hot glue them down, but I do recommend a stronger glue like an E6000 glue for a more permanent hold. Now I'm just going to take some jute twine and wrap that around the top and the bottom of the board. I'm going to wrap it uh, five or six times on each side. And this is what it will look like once it's completed.
I'm going to start off with four of these wooden rulers. And I'm also going to be using some of these wooden dowels. Taking the wooden dowels, I'm going to go ahead and cut them into six pieces. And I'm going to cut those at approximately four and a half inches each. Now the rulers that I have, they do have holes equally spaced, so I'm just going to go ahead and fill those with hot glue, and I'm going to place one dowel in each hole. If yours doesn't, that's fine. You can just go ahead and glue them directly to the ruler. Also, I do recommend using a wood glue or an E6000 glue for a more permanent hold. And this is what it will look like once the three dowels are in, and I'm going to go ahead and make two of these. And this is what they should look like once you have them both assembled. Now taking the other two rulers, I'm going to go ahead and fill those holes with hot glue. And I'm going to place the wooden dowels in to go ahead and start forming the ladder. Once you have both ladder pieces built, you're going to go ahead and glue them together as you can see me doing here. And I'm just going to go ahead and cross them over and glue them to form, start forming the shelf. And this is what the ladder should look like. This step is optional, but I'm going to take this lightweight spackle and I'm going to go ahead and cover the glue spots where I glued the wooden dowels in. It just seems to be able to hold the paint better. Um, and I didn't want to completely get rid of the hot glue because I do kind of like the effect to make it look like it's an actual ladder. Once that's fully dry, I'm going to go ahead and take a sandpaper or a sanding block and just go ahead and sand that down. And I'm going to be using the apple barrel paint in the color Burnt Umber to go ahead and paint the entire ladder. Now taking three pieces of foam board, these foam board pieces are approximately four inches in width. I'm going to cut one in about 13 inches in length, one seven inches in length, and one 10 inches in length. Taking apple barrel paint in the color brown oxide, I'm going to go ahead and give the foam board pieces one light coat, and this is what they will look like. Once that's fully dry, I'm going to go ahead and give it a second coat of this burnt umber. This will kind of make it look like the wood effect, like real wood. 
Now I'm just going to go ahead and place the foam board in the ladder from the largest to the smallest. Now I just went ahead and placed these in. If you want, you can always hot glue them, but I decided just to go ahead and place them in in case I ever want to remove them. And this is what your mini shelf ladder will look like. For this next project, I'm going to be taking this 5x7 canvas and just go ahead and remove the staples out. Once I have the staples all removed, I will go ahead and remove the canvas off, leaving just the wood frame. And I'm just going to go ahead and paint the frame using this burnt umber. Next, taking this We're Live Plant Shoe sign that I just printed from online, I'm going to go ahead and glue that to the back of the frame. Next, taking two of these tumbling tower blocks, I'm just going to go ahead and glue that to the back of the frame. I didn't paint mine, but you can always paint them to match the frame as well. For this last project, I'm not even sure if you'd really call it a DIY. I'm just going to take these mini succulent planters and I'm going to go ahead and paint them in the Waverly chalk paint in the color white. First, you're going to want to take these two mirrors and remove the foam legs and the stickers off of both backs. Next, you're going to want to take the apple barrel paint in the color brown oxide and paint the back of both mirrors. Once the paint is fully dry, you're going to take the apple barrel paint in the color antique white and just dry brush that all over the backs of both mirrors. We're going to take these two candy dishes and we're just going to be using the tops in this DIY. This step is optional. I went ahead and took the plastic ring off that way I didn't get any paint on it, but you could also use painter's tape and just tape around it as well. We're going to follow the same painting steps for these lids. First, we're going to paint the color brown oxide. Once that's dry, then we're going to use the antique white to dry brush on the top.
Once the paint is fully dry, you can go ahead and pop back on the plastic rings. Next, we're going to be using the cylinder vases. One is a 7.5 inch vase and the other is a 9 inch vase. We're just going to go ahead and glue these to the bottom of the mirrors. Now I am using hot glue for video purposes, but I always suggest using a mixture of E6000 and hot glue for a more permanent hold. Once you have the bottoms glued on, you can go ahead and take the top lids and place them on the vases. They do fit perfectly. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you're loving these farmhouse DIYs. Now you can fill these with anything you would like. I went ahead and used these uh, pillar candles and I'm going to use some greenery as well. Of course, I wouldn't suggest lighting these. These are just for decorational purposes. Once you place the lids back on the vases, your project will be completed. For the second project, we're going to take three 8x10 canvases and we're just going to take the canvas off. Now I did go ahead and remove the staples because I do want to use the canvas for a future project, but you can also just cut it off um, whichever way is easier for you. Once all the staples are removed and you remove the canvases, you're going to want to go ahead and paint all three using the brown oxide color. Once the paint's fully dry, you're going to take the antique white and just dry brush that on all three wood frames. As always, I want to thank all my current subscribers, and if you're not already subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, and make sure you hit that bell icon so you get notified every time I upload a video. Next, you're going to want to go ahead and glue the three frames together. It's a little bit difficult for me to explain, but you can see what I'm doing in the video. Also, it'll be a little bit easier for you to glue it. It was a little more difficult for me just because I was trying to keep the frames in focus while I was recording.
Once all three frames are glued, this is what it should look like. You should have a triangle shape. Now I'm going to take these two little wire containers and I'm going to paint them in the color brown oxide. And here's what they'll look like. They don't have to be perfect because it makes them look more rustic. Now I'm just going to take this jute twine and I'm going to go ahead and make a hanging basket. And here's what the little hanging basket will look like. Once that's complete, you're going to want to go ahead and put a strip of glue in the top of the frames at the triangle point. Then you're going to go ahead and take your basket and put the jute twine along that line of glue. And here's your completed flower hanging basket. I went ahead and just put some boxwood greenery in it, but you can put any type of floral flowers that you'd like. finish off this little hanging basket, I'm just going to add a few pieces of greenery to the top and to the sides. For the last DIY, it's super easy. I'm just going to take that second wire basket and fill it with some greenery and it'll be completed. I'm going to start off with these book bins. I'm using three because that's all my store had. Otherwise, I would have used four, but you can use three or four, whichever you prefer. 
Next, I spray painted all three bins using Rust-Oleum spray paint in the color white. Now you're gonna wanna go ahead and glue all three bins together. They do interlock with each other. I am just using the hot glue for video purposes. Uh, I do recommend an E6000 and hot glue combo for a more permanent hold. Next, I'm going to take two tumbling tower blocks that I glued together and I'm just going to glue them in between the two bins in the back just to make sure that they stay evenly spaced. As you can see, the inside of my bins aren't spray painted perfectly. Part of that's because I didn't really care too much since there's going to be stuff in it. And then also it's still kind of cold here, so the spray paint just wouldn't hold like it should have. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. It really helps my channel out a lot. If you're already subscribed to my channel, thank you so much. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe now and make sure you hit the bell icon to be notified every time I upload a new video. take the apple barrel paint in the color jet black and just go ahead and go around the rim of all three bins. It took me about three coats to get a solid black color.
here's what it will look like when it's fully painted and dry. Next, I'm gonna take this piece of foam board that I measured and cut to the length of all three bins. The height is optional based on what type of picture or wording you're gonna use. I'm just gonna use this Farm Fresh sign that I've uh, printed from online from a Google image search. Next, I'm gonna be using this white glue to glue the picture onto the foam board. Mod Podge works as well. I just didn't have any, uh, but either one works about the same. Next, we're gonna take the jet black paint and go ahead and line the outer part of the foam board. Also, we're gonna make a black line on the front of the foam board. Next, you're gonna to want to glue the foam board to the back of the bins and then your project will be complete. You can use this in the kitchen to hold cookbooks, to hold magazines. Um, you can use it just to hold just about anything. First, we're gonna take three of these plastic pots from the Dollar Tree.
For this next step, I do recommend a painter's tape, which I was out of, so I just used this jute twine, which I don't recommend, but it did work for the video purpose. I am trying to use what I have on hand, so I mix this burnt umber and snow white apple barrel paint to make a lighter brown to paint the bottom of the pots. Once all three pots are painted in the brown color on the bottom, you're going to take the snow white paint and paint the tops of all three. Next, I'm going to cut off the jute twine from each of the pots. Now, if you use painter's tape, this line is going to be a lot cleaner and it will look a lot better. Now I'm going to take this Spanish moss and fill each of the pots up. If you have floral foam, I do recommend putting a small piece in the bottom of each of the pots. Now taking the greenery, you're going to place one stem in each of the pots. I did use three different types of greenery, which all came from the Dollar Tree. My three planters are inspired by these three planters from Kirkland's. My three costed a total of $5 to make, and as you can see, Kirkland's is considerably higher, but they are a little bit larger. For this next project, we're going to start off by using a piece of foam board and making two six inch squares. Taking one of the six inch foam boards and eight of these tumbling tower blocks, we're going to glue two blocks to each of the corners as you see me doing here. And this is what it should look like. Now we're going to take four paint stir sticks and the foam board that we glued the Jenga blocks to and we're going to glue the sticks to each of the corner as you see me doing here and just leave a little space between the stick and the edge of the foam board. Once all four sticks are glued, this is what it should look like. Now taking this apple barrel paint in the color Territorial Beige, we're going to paint the entire frame. Once it's painted with one coat, this is what it will look like. And don't worry about the number showing on the sticks. Uh, the next step will cover those up. Now taking this apple barrel paint in the color Snow White, we're just going to dry brush the paint on the entire frame. And this is what it will look like. Now you can always put the white paint as light or as dark as you'd want. If the white gets too dark, you can always cover it back up with a little bit of the territorial beige paint. Mm -hmm. 
With the second six inch foam board that we cut, we're gonna take the territorial beige and the snow white, and we're gonna repeat the previous steps on this piece. And you only have to put the white dry brush paint on one of the sides. Now we're gonna take these beaded necklaces, which for this project, we only need two, and we're gonna paint them in the apple barrel paint in the color Snow White. Now I do suggest only using the green ones because as you can see here, after I painted them, the pink bled through. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use them for this DIY because it doesn't bother me that much and I didn't feel like uh, repainting another set of necklaces and waiting for them to dry. Now taking both necklaces, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut them and using one of the paint sticks, you're gonna cut the necklaces into four equal parts, the length of the paint stick. Once all four pieces are cut, you're going to also save one of the smaller pieces for this project also. Now taking your hot glue, you're going to glue down the side of the paint stick and glue the beads on all the way to the bottom and you're going to repeat that on all four sides. And this is what it will look like once all the beads are glued on and then you'll just take the six inch square that we painted earlier and glue the frame onto it as you see me doing here. Now I'm going to take eight of the tumbling tower blocks and glue them into a square and then once that's done we're going to paint them in the same way as before with the territorial beige and the snow white. Now taking the tumbling tower block square that we just made, we're going to glue that to the top of the frame. And this is what it will look like once that step's completed.
Now taking that smaller set of beads, we're gonna glue them to the top as you see me doing here. Now what I did to keep the beads from falling over and keep them standing up was I lined the back side of all the beads with one strip of hot glue and then once it fully dries it'll allow the beads to stay standing up. Once the hot glue fully dries, this is what the handle will look like. Now I'm going to take this larger size cylinder vase and this pillar candle. I'm going to apply a little bit of glue to the bottom of the candle and then place it inside the vase. Now I do not recommend lighting this candle, it is for decorational purposes only. I'm going to take the vase and place that inside the lantern and then your project will be complete. This lantern was inspired by the one in the right hand corner which is from Kirkland's for $39.99. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, you can give it a big thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed to my channel so you can see every time that I upload a new video. As always, you can leave me a comment below and let me know what you want to see next. Until next time, have a great day.